Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 16 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the behind the scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know, but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there. Again, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and welcome to episode number 16, where we are going to talk about 16 ways to get cheap and free books, free books for your classroom library. Now, I get asked this question a lot in my work with beginning elementary teachers, so I knew I needed to do a, do an entire show all about this topic. Now, I know that 16 is kind of a weird number, especially because this is episode number 16, but as I kept thinking about and doing research about this topic as I prepared for this show, I just, I knew I couldn't leave anything out. So if you're at the gym or if you're driving and you can't remember everything we talk about today, because 16 is a lot, you can grab a copy of these 16 ways to get free or cheap books for your classroom library in the full show notes at drlauriefrazen.com in episode number 16. So now before we dive into the ways of getting free or inexpensive books for your classroom library, just a word of caution, make sure you build your library with books that your students will actually be interested in reading. I made this mistake when I first started. I just like grabbed whatever I could get. Whenever anybody offered me a free book, I would like, yes, I needed books for my library. So whatever they offered... I would take. But I soon realized (laughs) that lots of books is not nearly as important as having books that your students really want to read. So if you aren't sure what kinds of books to collect for your class library, ask other teachers at your grade level which authors or which titles are most popular with this age group. And you can also ask on Facebook groups for your specific grade level which titles and authors are most popular for your grade. And even just doing a quick Google search for, you know, best books for third grade or must read books for third grade or whatever grade you'll be teaching can give you a pretty good idea of titles to get started with. And actually, if you go onto the We Are Teachers blog, they have some great articles. They have, for example, a list of the the best third grade books to share with their students, all recommended by other third grade teachers. So to do a quick search that way is also a great idea. All right. The first way I'm going to recommend for you to get great books for your class library is to make friends with the librarian at your school. Because if you're a new teacher, you're probably going to be spending a lot of your time at your new school over the summer anyways. So find out who your school librarian is and when he or she, it's usually a she, but when he or she is planning to be there. And I'm never, I'll never forget the name of our school librarian because She was just such an awesome human being and the kids absolutely loved her. Her name was Laura Morden. So Laura, if you're listening, you are amazing. And I hope that you as beginning teachers are as fortunate as I was in the treasure that Laura became in my teaching life. Beyond just helping me to get books from my classroom library, this woman was a gem in so many other ways, which I'll tell you about in a minute. You're probably going to have some immediate synergy with your school librarian anyways, because you're both likely pretty passionate about books. So here's something I did right at the time, but I didn't realize, I wasn't strategic about it. It's just something I realized looking back, I actually did this right. So I didn't know the ally I was actually making when I came by the library and introduced myself in the middle of the summer. So I just walked by and said, hey, I'm Lori, I'm a new teacher. And she said, I'm Laura and I'm the librarian. And we became kind of friends. The next day I brought her an iced coffee and we just kind of hit it off. So when you're at the school this summer, introduce yourself to your school librarian and then just ask them if you can meet with them one day. You can bring coffee or bring something, you know, just to make it a little bit more relaxed and informal. And then explain that you're just starting out and you're trying to build your class library and you're wondering if she has any ideas for how you might be able to get some books. You'd be surprised, I didn't realize this, by how many extra copies of free books or old books 
librarians sometimes have that they have discretion over they might who they might give them to. So like even like well-loved titles that the kids loved and kept, you know, checking out over and over again, even if they're a little bit dog-eared, you know that the kids love them. So taking them, those copies are really invaluable when you're, when you're first starting out. And getting your school librarian on your side early in the year and beginning to develop a genuine relationship with her can also save you so much time throughout the year when you really need books on a particular topic or unit of study. Now, the librarian at my school, Laura, and I developed a great relationship and I was so grateful and surprised when she began offering to pull books for me whenever I was beginning a new unit of study in my classroom because we were friends. So I was just telling her one day how overwhelmed I felt as a new teacher and she pulled me aside and said, okay, here's what I can do for you. Each month, why don't you send one of your little sweethearts down to the library with a list of the books you need or just the topic you guys are going to be studying the next month and I'll pull those books for you. I mean, really, how lucky was I? So it became a huge reward in my classroom for who would get to earn the privilege of going to the library to spend some time with our librarian to get some new books for our classroom. So I would send a list of books I really wanted to use in my classroom over the next month or so down to the library. And a half hour later, our librarian would show up with an entire bin of great books for us to use. I mean, so lucky. I was so grateful for her help and for her friendship. And it sure made my planning a lot easier knowing that I didn't have to hunt for books every month. So if you listen to episode number six, um, episode number 14, sorry, six things to do this summer to ensure you're ready for your first year. I talk about developing relationships with a lot of the key people at your school during the summer months when everyone's a lot less busy and stressed. So it's a great way also to begin to feel more at home and less isolated as a new teacher when you develop these relationships. So I know that was a long one, but that's a big one. Number one. Number two, as you develop this relationship with your school librarian, ask her about any local library book sales that are going on in your community. Because often you can actually get some fantastic deals at these local library book sales. So find out when they happen and find out if she knows if schools get any kinds of special discounts. Your librarian might even get an extra discount that you didn't even know about. And depending on the quality of your relationship with her, she might even invite you to tag along when she goes. So you just never know. Number three, garage sales. Oh my gosh. I have found some incredible treasures at garage sales. So many times, like empty nesters who's kids have gone off to college. They're finally ready to give away their children's books that they've been holding on to for 10 years. And they're often in fantastic shape because those books haven't been touched in years. And they're some of the best titles because they were their children's favorites. I remember at one garage sale, a young mom told me that she gave away all of her children's books from the previous year every year so she could make room in her house for new books each year. So as I talked to her, I got to know her a little. And she, and when she realized that I was just starting out as a teacher and that I taught at her kid's school, she started saving all of her books for me every summer, which was amazing because her books were like only about a year old and she just loved to buy books for her kids. So you just never know. When you're at a garage sale, just what kinds of treasures you might be able to find like that. Now, number four, your teacher wish list. Oh, this is such a good idea, you guys. So one of the things I did every year was at the beginning of the year, I sent home my teacher wish list of book titles that I really wanted to add to our class library as part of my back to school newsletter to parents. And then I would ask parents to donate any books that their kids had outgrown or didn't read anymore. So I created like a Mrs. Friesen's wish list of books and I made a wish list of books also on Amazon and then shared the link with parents on my back to school newsletter. And you'd be amazed by what some parents are willing to donate to your classroom if you just ask. One year, actually, I had a couple of kids in my classroom whose dads were dentists. So, you know, they had a little bit of mom money and their moms didn't work. So they spent a lot of time in my classroom as volunteers. And when I sent home my wish list, these two moms came back one week later with everything I had listed on it. 
like I couldn't believe it. I started, I started thinking, Matt, Matt, I maybe I should have wished for more. <laughs> but seriously, I think they must have spent at least three hundred dollars on books for me. And the third year I was teaching, this is a crazy true story. I had no idea that the superintendent's granddaughter was in my classroom. And when I sent home my request for books, he actually contacted me directly and let me know about some special funding the district had for new teachers that I didn't even know existed. So I was able to get even more books for my classroom. So you just never know who's in your classroom or what kinds of connections their parents might have that can help you. And you won't know unless you ask. And by the way, um, I also put a really cool dedication sticker inside of each book that just says donated by, and then the, per- the person's name, because kids love to see the books that have been donated from their own families in our class library. And you can just use address labels to create quick and easy donated by stickers, or you can even buy a rubber stamp to stamp on address labels that say donated by, and then just fill in the blank. So you can also send home your teacher wish list of books at Christmas time and at the end of the year, because so often parents ask you, well, you know, what do you need or what do you like for your classroom or what could we get for you? So rather than them trying to guess, I mean, I always send home a teacher wish list of books because parents love to buy books. And you can also ask for other supplies, by the way, or things that your class needs, like an electric pencil sharpener. Oh my gosh, I asked for that one year and hands down one of the best investments I ever asked parents to make to help in our classroom. It was awesome. Okay. Getting back to our list. Number five, ask teachers at higher grade levels at your school, if they have any books that they aren't using in their classrooms that they might want to donate to your new library. It's also a great way to get to know some of the other teachers at your school because it gives you a reason to knock on their door and just make conversation. This is how I got to know one of the most amazing teachers I think I've ever met who became like a mentor teacher to me because the moment I reached out and let her know what I needed, she then popped by my classroom to drop off books whenever something came across her desk that she didn't need. So those small connections are what really help to build relationships in a new school. Lots of teachers, especially new teachers, say to me, I don't know how to make friends at a new school, which we're going to do an entire show on later for how to make new friends at a new school. But it's really important to make those little connections as often as possible. And when you're looking for books for your library, that's a good reason to stop by someone's door. Okay, number six, you can also enlist the help of your principal. So ask I know often they don't have budgets, but still ask, ask if they have a budget for books for new teachers, or if they know of any money that might be available for this purchase. Again, the more people you can ask in your immediate vicinity and let them know that you want help with developing your library, the better chance you have for small contributions from lots of different sources that can add up to a fantastic library. So your principal might even have some books that they want to donate. You never know. Number seven, you can also apply for grants. Now this is a lot more time intensive, but in the summer, if you have a little bit of extra time, it might be worth it. So a lot of granting agencies provide funding to elementary schools for books. You can check out the Laura Bush Foundation and I'll link to that organization in my show notes for episode number 16. And also Dollar General has a literacy foundation. Who knew? So they also donate books to schools. Again, ask your principal if they know of any other organizations locally or even nationally that might provide free books. If they know you're looking, they're going to provide resources. Number eight, Scholastic. Oh my gosh, I think this is probably on every teacher's list, even when you're a veteran teacher. So each time your students purchase books from Scholastic, you earn free dollars that you can spend on books for your classroom. So you can save up your Scholastic dollars for specific titles that you really want. And one way I really helped to encourage scholastic sales in my classroom was to send home suggested titles for the upcoming order by having students circle specific books that I would recommend, or I would list them in my newsletter that month, telling parents why I recommended specific books or authors, especially if I was planning a unit of study around a specific topic. Now, of course, 
I would never be pushy about asking parents to place an order with Scholastic, but I actually see it as part of my job to recommend books that will not only help get their kids reading at home, but will also help them to get more out of upcoming units of study that our class would be working on at school. So for example, every spring in second grade, we did a small crawling and flying animals unit, which was hugely popular with the kids. So I was always sure to highlight any books, both fiction and and nonfiction that either featured animals or insect characters like Fly Guy. Some of my lower readers loved Fly Guy, or that would encourage my students to learn more about this topic. So if I was reading a chapter book also aloud to my students, or if I saw any titles I knew they would really enjoy, I would just be sure to highlight those books and give a short book talk about which ones I recommended and why. And it helped to not only boost interest in specific books for my students, but parents tended to want to buy more books because their children came home telling their parents how much they really wanted them. And you know how excited I get about things I'm passionate about, so I can get really excited about books. So I wasn't trying to push them again. I'm not trying to push books on parents or try to get them to buy them, but I kind of am because I'm so passionate about reading. So it was a balance I had to be very careful about. All right. Number nine, watch out for the Scholastic Warehouse sales. I didn't even know about this when I first started teaching. Um, Now, these sales happen a few times a year and it's Scholastic's way of clearing out old inventory and it's heaven for us teachers. Now, the sales are exclusively for librarians and teachers and district and school employees and volunteers, book fair chair people, and homeschool teachers, but those are the only one people who can actually buy them. But during these warehouse sales, teachers can buy all of the selected titles for 50% off. So I'm going to link to where you can learn more about Scholastic Warehouse sales in the show notes for this episode. Now, number 10, this one's a really cool one. I I did this and I got a lot of books. I wrote to publishers, especially in the summer, to authors and to Amazon. And I told them that I was a new teacher and asked if they had any free copies they would be willing to give me in exchange for a review or for feedback. So I'm always seeing this on Amazon that reviews are offered in exchange for a free product. So this could be a great way to build your classroom library if there are specific titles you really want and you can offer an honest review that you really like them. Now, number 11, if, a, if 50% or more of your students are living at or below the national poverty line, there's an organization called Kids Need to Read that might be another option for you to get some free books. They start accepting applications every, every July. So applying early will definitely help you to have a better chance at being selected as a recipient. So mark your calendars for that one because it's coming up soon. And again, I will link to that in the show notes. Um, you can also check out the First Book Marketplace for free books. First Book is a nonprofit again, and their mission is to help educators to get access to everything they need. And you just have to pay a nominal fee for the shipping. So those are some other great resources. Okay, here's another one that a lot of people don't think about. But number 12, write to your district office and ask if there are any teachers at your grade level who are retiring And would they be willing to donate their books to you? And in fact, when I left teaching, when I left my classroom, another principal offered $500 to me to purchase my leveled library for a new teacher at his school. I guess he just heard about the fact that I was leaving and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my library. And he came by and said, actually, I'll pay you for it. So that was really awesome. And you just never know if your principal is very supportive of helping beginning teachers, they might be willing to put some money into your classroom to buy you some books like that. So write to your district office and find out, first of all, if there are any teachers at your grade level who are retiring and find out what they're doing with their books, because that could be a great option for you. Okay. Number 13, check out bargain booksellers like Thrift Books. There are a bunch of these online, Thrift Books, um, The Book Outlet, and Better World Books. Those are all different bargain booksellers online that you can go to and get some great titles at very cheap prices. So I'll link to those in the show notes. And number 14, ask your principal if he or she would be willing to ask at a staff meeting if any teachers have extra copies of books that they'd be willing to donate to your classroom as you begin to build up your library. 
principals are often very aware of how much it costs to build up your first classroom library. So if introducing yourself to other teachers and asking if they have any donations directly feels too intimidating to you, you might want to ask your principal if he or she would be willing to ask for you. So that's another way you could go around it. Now, number 15, if you're interested in setting up a crowdfunding venture to fund your class library, um, Donors Choose is a fantastic option. This organization's mission is to connect the public to public schools and to make it easy for anyone to help a classroom in need. And this was started by teachers, so they really know how to set up your request in a way that will resonate with people who want to help. So if you want to put in the work to putting together a crowdfunding venture, that might be an option for you. And number 16, this one's so creative, and I did it in my classroom, and I had so much fun with it. It's Number 16 is create a class art sale and invite parents to come and purchase art that your students have created. So I had a suggested retail price um, on each of the students' artwork, which was the same price. I mean, it was like, I think we charged $3 per piece of art, or you can charge admission to your art exhibit with all proceeds going towards your class library. Or you could do a class science fair or a reader's theater presentation, whatever it is, with a donation box available and all proceeds going to your class library as a class fundraiser. You can also create thank you cards from student artwork and have students vote on one or two pieces that will be selected to be made into cards for sale. Just be sure to ask your principal about rules around creating class fundraisers and specifically what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do in terms of collecting money. So there might be some sticky points around that. So just make sure you ask for um, permission from your principal, whatever you decide you want to do. All right, so those are 16 ways for how you can begin building your classroom library. I hope you got some great ideas. It's crazy to me that classrooms don't come already equipped with books that are engaging and full of high quality literature for students. But if you start early, which is why I'm releasing this show now, you'll be able to build an incredibly high quality library of amazing books for your kiddos. Now, I hope you tune in next week because it's going to be a really good one. We're going to talk all about how to create your classroom management plan so you can step into your first year knowing exactly what kind of a classroom community you intend to create for your lucky students. Now, if you haven't already downloaded and read through the Ultimate Classroom Management Checklist, please do that right away so that when we talk about how to create your classroom management plan next week, You'll be ready to take that next step towards creating the classroom of your dreams. And if you're getting great value from this podcast, if you're feeling extra loving, go ahead and leave me a positive review. I love hearing from my students. And it's also very helpful for me to know what you're finding valuable and what you need more help with. All right. I hope you have a wonderful week. And remember, just because you're a beginning teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now. Thank you.